Using Photoshop layers, we're learning how to quickly and easily shade patterned clothing. The trick is going to allow you to make use of a more diverse wardrobe for your characters. Uh, you can use this trick you know, on flannel t-shirts, graphic tees, striped suits for gangsters, you know, patterned leggings for hipster girls, and a logo on a cape or a flag. And in this example, we're doing a two-tone baseball tee. The goal is to let your skills keep up with your imagination for any kind of clothing fashion because what we typically see drawn are plain, single-colored clothes on characters just because that's the easiest thing to draw. But after this video, you will know how to draw impressively patterned clothing in Photoshop without having to put in hardly any extra time or effort. This method can be broken down into three stages. And so on the screen, I have three panels, each panel showing each stage. Okay, so step one. Step one is to flat color your drawing so you can easily select your clothing. If you don't know what the term flat color means, it's when you color a line drawing. So if you've ever seen an old comic from the Silver Age of Comics, you know, like the 1970s, no shading of any colors. It was all done with ink and solid color, like a coloring book. So we do a flat color layer so we can easily select things on our drawing. So in panel one, you see his shirt is a solid red color on our flat color layer. That is so we can easily select his shirt. We want to be able to select the whole shirt, no matter what we do to it or where we are in the coloring process. So duplicate your flat color layer and then lock it under the one you'll be working on. After you've completed flat coloring your drawing or comic page, you will need to duplicate that flat color layer and designate the new top one as your final coloring layer. I've done this and you can see my uh, old, you know, original flat color is in green and my new one that I'll be working on is orange. The green one is locked and I'm not going to be doing anything to it ever again. Its sole purpose is to hide under there and wait for me to use that magic wand selection tool on it. Now for phase two, where we integrate the pattern. We're not shading it yet, we're just drawing on a pattern or you know a second color onto the shirt. And I am doing this by selecting the shirt with the magic wand tool and then using the brush tool, I draw a white section of the baseball tee. So now we have an unshaded two color baseball tee. And we're ready to move on to the last phase, which is phase three, shading the shirt on a new layer. This is where we add a new layer that we will be doing all the shading on. Uh, once I've added a new layer on top of my coloring layer, I make sure that I still have the whole shirt selected and then I begin shading. I adjust the type of layer it is depending on the situation. Uh, I'll put an arrow to show you where you do that. Here it is. Here I am using a normal layer, although sometimes you'll want to change the layer blending type. Another common layer blending type I use is multiply or you know color burn, linear burn, hard light, soft light. Uh, all these are Photoshop layer types. The other decision you'll be making is the shade and color of your shading. How dark and what color do you want this shading to be? When I'm deciding, I think about the light source. This is where we get into color theory, and that is a whole topic in itself. But basically, how dark your shadows are depends on how bright or intense your light source is. In this instance, we're going with pretty dark shadows, and it's also somewhat green for the environment being in front of a TV at night. And that is what is so awesome about this method, because with a Photoshop layer, it gives you the freedom to go back at any time and change the hue. So you can adjust it to be lighter or darker or even change the color if you want it to say be red instead of green. If you ever change your mind, you have the freedom and the ability to really easily do that. Okay, and that's it. Now to recap, step one is to flat color your line work on a layer. This is your flat color layer. Then you duplicate your flat color layer. 
put it down below, lock it, make it invisible. Next, you would draw or insert your pattern on the copied layer. And finally, you just add a new layer and that layer is just for shading that clothing. I hope this video helped you and inspired you to try out some new fashions on your characters. You know, if it does, give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see more of the comic, this right here is Tales from the Crib Keeper 9. You'll find a link in the video description to it and my DeviantArt gallery, where I will see you later.